As I've said before, when I stand before you, I always want to share something that I hope will encourage you. And I want to share something that's been a great encouragement to me in these days. In my Bible reading, I want to read with an attitude of faith. And I want the reality of the verse to just grab me with the truth of it. So I recently ran across a phrase that just stopped me in my tracks. It hit me with the full intent of what it was trying to say, and it made the verse become very, very real to me. And that phrase was, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea? Now, it's kind of strange. What is it saying? What does it mean that the earth should change? Is it not a strange thing to think about? The earth itself changing? It brought to my mind incredibly significant events on par with the great flood that destroyed the earth. Not a small event, but a cataclysmic event. A literal earth-changing event. This is not global warming we're talking about. This is global destruction. Think about the mountains slipping into the heart of the sea, but where are most of the mountains? They're not near the sea, are they? If the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, things are not going very well, I'll tell you that. So picture in your mind these cataclysmic events really happening. Imagine turmoil on a scale that certainly none of us have ever known or probably ever imagined. Set these thoughts in your mind. I want to work backwards in this verse to see where it brings us. So if we go back one phrase from what we're imagining in our minds right now, we find the phrase that says, therefore, we will not fear. What? Cataclysm is preceded by the words, therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. Wow. <laughs> to not fear in the face of cataclysm is really something. There must be some faith going on here. So think about it. Not fearing in the midst of the most significant thing you can imagine is really incredible. That phrase starts with the word, therefore. And we know that when we see this word, it's preceded by something significant. Therefore is there for a reason. So let's go back further to the phrase before the therefore. What does it say? It says, a very present help in trouble. We've seen the trouble. We know it's bad. But how good is it to hear of help in trouble? <laughs> it's not only help, but it's very present help. I don't know about you, but when I'm in trouble, I want help right now. I want very present help. And that's what this verse is describing. Help that's available in the moment of need. Help that's just being, just waiting to be ready for us. It's help that anticipates the need, even before the trouble starts. It's personal help that's sure and ready. It's help that says, I am 
for you and I am with you, that's the kind of help I want and that's the kind of help I need. And I'm sure that's true for you. So let's look at the first phrase of this verse, the primary phrase, the phrase that gives ultimate meaning to everything that follows it. And as many of you know now, it says, God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength. <laughs> now everything makes sense. It starts with God. And it's a personal declaration of who he is to us. He is our refuge. He is our strength. So what is a refuge? It's a place of safety and protection. It's security, even in the midst of calamity. That's God. He's our refuge, and he's our strength. Would we expect to be strong when we see the mountains slip into the heart of the sea? Not in ourselves, we wouldn't. But with God as our refuge, we would. We find our confidence and our strength in him, not in ourselves. He is our refuge and our strength. So let me read it all together. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains Slip into the heart of the sea. Psalm 46, 1 and 2. Psalm 46 was the scriptural inspiration for Martin Luther's great hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Psalm 46 can also be an inspiration to all of us as we prepare for hard times or when we're in the midst of them right now. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for who you are. You are our refuge and our strength. You are our help. You are God who rules and reigns over all things. And Father, we only need to turn to you to receive all that you have for us. You tell us that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And that includes all our needs when we face trouble. So Father, thank you for your grace and your mercy toward us in all times, in all circumstances. Nothing touches us without your permissive will. And we know that we are always in your hand. And that's exactly where we want to be. Thank you, Father, for our gathering today and for the teaching of your word. May we receive your encouragement today. And thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.